Welcome back to another video from Not Only Trout. If you haven't taken a moment, please go ahead and click subscribe for more fly tying videos. In this video, we're tying the Kraken Damsel Nymph. In the vise, we have a Daiichi 2546 in size six, and we have a 3.3 millimeter fluorescent orange brass bead. Go ahead and get started by tying your thread in, cut off your tag end, and what you're gonna go ahead and do is grab some marabou. We're going to use some Sculpin Olive, and we're gonna measure that out to be one hook length in length. From there, go ahead and get a couple of locking wraps to tie the marabou in place. You'll see that I align everything back on the top of the hook. That's to keep the body a little bit more uniform. Once I get it locked into place, I go back in, cut out the remainder of the marabou, and I make it so that I can tie that in nice and clean. So I go back, lock it in place, keep the marabou on top of the hook, go back to the bend and I work my way forward and I just clean up all those tag ends. It allows it to be a little bit smoother and a little bit more seamless of a body by tying everything down nice and clean. You'll see that I left a small space behind the bead. I did that on purpose. It allows me to have a little bit of spot to lock everything in behind the bead to give a really clean appearing fly. Once you have everything cleaned up to how you like, go ahead and create a dubbing loop. And once you do that, I wrap the thread around itself a couple of times to give myself a nice tight tie-in point so that the materials don't slide out. And advance the thread back up to the hook point, or to the eye of the hook, excuse me. And get your thread that's looped around your finger into your dubbing twister to allow you to get everything locked in place. From here, just do a quick half hitch to go ahead and keep your thread in place so it doesn't go crazy on you while you're getting everything taken care of. Now we'll go ahead and grab some Kraken Dubbing in GT Olive. I really love this color. It's got kind of an orangish and olivish rubber leg in it. it. Makes a really, really good looking fly. So what we do is we put that in the open loop that we have and spread it out so you have a pretty fine loop, especially towards the back end or the top of the loop. Now go through, spin that up and brush it out. You can see that I'm brushing that out, trying to get as many of those legs and dubbing fibers free as I can without having everything fly everywhere. Go ahead and spin it up again. Make sure everything's in there nice and tight. Helps you build a more durable fly. And then brush that out again to get those legs cleared out. Now we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and use the rotary feature on the vise. And we're gonna go ahead and just do nice touching wraps and preen everything back in the process so that it goes the direction we want it to. You'll see me do that the entire time with this fly, trying to make it as backward focused as I can. It gives the fly a little bit more flow. And then just wrap that all the way up to right behind the bead head. And now that we're there, we'll go ahead preen our fibers back just to try and get everything out of the way as we can. Grab our tying thread and we're gonna do a couple cross catching wraps. So go behind the material over the top, wrap in front a couple of times, go behind the material again, wrap around and lock it in place and then snip it out. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go in and grab a small pinch of this crack and dubbing and kind of veil it around the entire hook. And that gives us a little bit more of a collar volume. And then once I have that, I pull everything back, pull tight and lock it right behind the bead. And we'll brush this out and clean it up a little bit. So now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll do two four turn whip finishes. And that just allows us to have increased durability when we lock everything in place without needing to add in any additional head cement, which you absolutely could do. I just don't find it necessary with two uh, whip finish going in there. So snip off your thread and then come back in with your dubbing brush and clean everything out as much as you can. Rub it, get everything nice and loose. Get any of those trap rubber legs and trap fibers out. And you'll see that sometimes we have some really long fibers. I'm gonna come in and trim those out. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. And sometimes you have rubber legs that get caught in a loop so that both of the ends are underneath something. So you can go through and snip them and they'll still stay in nice and tight. 
I have one crazy rubber leg that doesn't want to stay back, so I'll just grab that one specifically and pull back till it either snaps or goes into the direction I want it to. Go ahead and preen your fibers, trim up any other stragglers that you have, and you now have a completed fly. These flies are available for all my existing customers and new customers at notonlytrout.com. Thank you.